Oh, and just in case you're wondering, that Marlin 22 mag stock, it came out really, really nice. It just needs one last coat of linseed oil, and then we'll get that finished off. Uh, to be honest, I haven't had time to uh, get over here and work on this. I've been really busy on that boat, and uh, really want to push that forward over there on that on my other project. All right, folks, I'll be back. Well, good evening, folks. Welcome back. And uh, thank you all for watching. I and mean, I thank all my subscriber type persons out there. And uh, I've now got the cap bonded in place and I've started the process of uh, fairing it out. Just bonding in these little corner pieces and getting them fared and uh, getting all the uh, blending work done in these corners here so the fiberglass will lay in there nice and smooth. You got to do the same thing over there. And uh, well, I was out here earlier today and I was actually looking at my outboard right there in the box. And I needed to look at my fuel line fittings when something caught my attention. And what caught my attention was this handle right here. And of course this is what's going to clamp to the transom. And I got to looking at that handle and uh, got to looking at this cut out right here again and looked at the handle and looked at the cut out and I realized that's going to be kind of a tight fit right there. Now what that handle is, all that is is just so I can actually pick up uh, the outboard and it just gives me a, a, a hand hold. It gives me a place to pick it up on the, on the uh, front of the outboard and there's another little uh, hand hold in the back there in the back underneath the case but um, what I came to realize was, is when I get ready to set that down in there, I'm not going to have enough room for my knuckles. And so I'm going to have to open this up just a little bit more right here. And as you can see, I've already got the, the lines drawn. I've got, I've got a cut line right there. And so I've just got to extend this opening a little further forward. And so I'm going to get busy doing that. I'm going to grab the uh, jigsaw here in a moment. And we're going to get busy cutting. So when I get that done, I will be right back. Okay, so I got that piece cut out right here. I've extended this cut out about an inch, not quite an inch. And uh, this is uh, one of the little pieces I cut out of there. And I still have to round over the corners. And I've got to cut this little leftover piece of tab out right here. Uh, originally, I was going to bond this piece right here on the forward side of this uh, little cutout area right here and I was going to just box all that in right there and uh, of course now I'm going to have to remake that piece so I'm going to go grab a little saw blade attachment for my ziz wheel and very carefully uh, without um, taking a finger off or letting that thing uh, get a hold of me I've got to take that little piece out right there, or at least get as much of it as I can, and I can come back maybe with a, uh, a sanding block or something and get the rest. But I need to get that out of there. And I'm just, like I said, I'm going to end up having to remake this piece in order to uh, close that area out like I want to. So, you know, just lessons learned. Like I said, uh, that, that is just for uh, the lift handle on the front end of that outboard, and that's just so I will be able to uh, get my knuckles down in there when I go to uh, install or remove the outboard and uh, th this, the way it was it was just going to be a knuckle skinner so we're just going to open it up and uh, just make my life a little easier basically okay folks I'll be back yeah I can't even begin to tell you how dangerous this thing is and I've used these for years in uh, aviation maintenance but I tell you what, I mean, you have to be super, super careful with these. No guards, no shields, nothing. So, like I said, I don't want this uh, tearing into my hands or fingers. I have to be very careful. So I will not be recording that process because I want both hands on this die grinder while I'm cutting that piece out. All right, I'll be back when that's done. Okay, so I got that piece out of there. 
and uh, had it opened up. Like I said, I will have to come back probably with a, a sanding block or something from the bottom and take off the rest of it. There's like a, oh, maybe about an eighth of an inch of that piece left on there, tacked on there with wood glue. All righty, so that's done. And now I can take that blade out of there and go safely stow it away. These actually, and what we use these for in aviation maintenance, these are actually for uh, cutting uh, graphite and fiberglass, Kevlar, and other composite materials. And uh, we do a lot of composite repairs in aircraft maintenance, and uh, that, that's what those would be used for. And again, uh, we would use those under very controlled conditions. So, like I said, I'm done with that part. I still have all my uh, fingers, and uh, we can go ahead and uh, put that blade away now. All right, I will be back. Okay, hopefully you can see that. We got most of that out of there. That's actually when you run your finger across it, you cannot feel any kind of a ridge right there. So I think I can work with that. Like I said, this is a splash well right here, so this has to be closed up. And uh, it will have a through hole drain right about in this area here, right about in the center. And uh, what really started all this this morning was I was getting ready to install this little piece right here to close up that uh, forward end of that splash well right there. And I wanted to go look at my fuel line fitting in that box. Uh, well, so I opened up the box with the outboard in it, and uh, that's when I noticed that handle that I, that I had not noticed before. And so I said, okay, yeah, we might have an issue here. Uh, I could have made that work uh, with this just like it was if I had not cut that out. There was just enough clearance uh, for that handle to go down into that well right there, but... Like I said, there wouldn't have been enough room when, when I'm holding the, the outboard on the front end by that handle. My knuckles would have just banged into the top of the deck right there. And so that had to be opened up. Uh, I just want to give myself uh, enough room there to get my hand and get that handle down into this area. Just so I can handle that outboard, it weighs about 100 or so pounds. I think it's 105 pounds is what it weighs. And uh, I don't want to risk dropping that thing on the floor when I'm trying to install it on the transom and so that's kind of uh, that, that's how all this kind of came about and it just one thing led to another but it is late it is hot I am tired I think we've got some storms coming in because man it is humid it is just 17 kinds of humid tonight and so that's it I'm gonna call it a night we'll pick this up in the morning I'll see you then all right, that's it. We are done. I've got that looking like it was. Well, almost, except for the piece I cut out right here. Uh, got the corners rounded over. Got the corners radius right here. And uh, I did increase that radius just a little bit on these two corners. But uh, now all I need to do is box in this area right here. Get that closed in. And I'm just going to keep working on that. I'll see you here in a moment. Welcome back, folks. And it is another glorious, humid day the Lord has made. Let me show you what I've been busy doing this morning. So however many videos ago it was, and it's probably been a year and a half or so ago, when I assembled the uh, frame right here, I only uh, installed a portion of this top cap right here. And I mentioned in that video... Uh, and I'm pretty sure I mentioned it, that I would have to uh, complete all of this at a later time. And of course, that included uh, the stern section back here also. Well, as you can see, I got the stern section uh, pretty much done. Now, I just need to finish out this forward section right here up to the uh, deck that's going to uh, be installed right here in this area. And so what I've been doing this afternoon, I've been making these pieces right here that will bond in place and these will be the forward section of the top cap and I've got one made for that side also. So like I said that's what I've been up to now I just need to get busy and bond those two pieces in place. I'll be back when that's done. All 
Alrighty, I got those pieces bonded in on both sides and that means the top part of this cap it's complete all the way up to uh, what's going to be the casting deck right here and uh, I'll get that made later. Now I need to turn my attention to those uh, pieces of stainless steel I showed you here uh, a couple of months ago. These are going to mount on the transom and uh, one's going to be inboard, one's going to be outboard. They're going to be bolted down and uh, that's where the outboard is going to clamp to. And remember I said these are wear plates. This is to keep the clamps on the outboard from wearing into that wood right there. And uh, that's where those pieces are going to attach. I've got to get them drilled up. I've got to bore a big hole right here for a through hole drain. And that's because, remember, I said this area right here will be boxed in. It will be closed up. It's going to be like a splash well and uh, water has to have a way to get out. Alright folks, I'm going to get busy on that tomorrow. It is Sunday evening so I am calling it a night. We will see you later. Good morning folks, I'm back. And as you can see, I've got these stainless steel pieces drilled up now. Now I did discover one thing. I found that I made this piece right here uh, just a little bit too long. I'm going to have to shorten it by about an inch. The reason is, is I need to put a scupper drain uh, there at floor level at the aft end of the boat. And I, like I said, I made this too long right here. I don't have enough room for that drain, so I'm just going to shorten this piece. It's still plenty long. Uh, the uh, outboard will still, the, the saddle of the outboard will still have plenty of uh, area right here to seat against. And so I just got to break out the jigsaw and got to find some metal blades and I uh, just got to chop that piece off right there. I'll be back when that's done. Well, all right, back again. And I'm still working on these two pieces of stainless right here. Uh, I've just started the process of uh, drilling all my fastener holes and uh, I've only got about half of them drilled. And uh, after I get the holes drilled, I've got to come back and countersink them. But before I can install these pieces on the transom, I actually have a little bit of work I want to do on the transom itself. This is the area, of course, where the outboard is going to clamp to. And I kind of feel like uh, that's going to be a little bit of a high stress area. There's going to be more stresses placed on this part of the transom right here just due to uh, the, the, the force of the outboard pushing the boat through the water and vibration and what have you. And so I want to beef this up just a little bit prior to uh, finishing out this area, prior to installing uh, uh, those stainless pieces. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and reinforce the inboard side of the, the transom here uh, with some uh, heavy fiberglass fabric. And what I want to do is I want to take a couple of sheets of uh, that 8 ounce fiberglass cloth and I'm just going to lay them in here and I'm going to extend uh, one sheet down to this little stiffener right here and I'm going to extend another piece over into these braces on either side. I would really like to get that done tonight so I'm going to go ahead and start mixing up my resin, cutting my fabric, and uh, we're going to get that laid in there. I'll be back. Okay, I know that's kind of hard to see. Let me see if this helps. And it's still kind of hard to see. Uh, take my word for it, there, there is now two layers of 8-ounce uh, fiberglass on that. And... Uh, all we can do now is just wait for the resin to set up. That'll probably be sometime in the morning. And, uh, you know, like I mentioned earlier, I just want to make sure we toughen this area up right here. All right, folks, I will see you in the morning. Okay, folks, I'm back. And uh, this fiberglass right here is fully cured. I've started sanding on the rough edges already. And I have this little piece remade here. And uh, these are the pieces, as you may recall, that I said I needed to make in order to box this area in. We want to close that in. Uh, that will be a splash well. And uh, the only thing I have left to do is I've got to bore a hole 
oh right about there yonder somewhere for the fuel line to pass through all right folks it is now time for me to head off to work i just glued these pieces together oh about two hours ago we're, 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 we're going to give them time to fully cure before i start uh, picking that up and handling it a whole lot and so uh yeah, I'm just going to walk away and just leave everything. I'll be back tonight. Well, good morning, folks. And as you can see right there, I just finished boxing in the transom right here. And I still need to address these corners. I don't know if you can see that. And uh, that's just something that I'm going to take care of later on down the road. The epoxy is still sopping wet, so we're going to let that dry. And I'm also going to go ahead and cut off this video right here. And we're going to pick this up in the next video. I think the run time is starting to uh, get up there a little bit on this one. So we are going to go ahead, wrap this one up. And uh, as I always say, God bless each and every one of you. Thank you all for watching. Thank you to all my subscribers. And in all things, to God and to our Lord Jesus Christ, be the glory. We will see you next time.